CrowdStrike, I, I, this is a story that's, that's I think, going to be lingering, and it's going to be interesting. So uh, as you probably know, there was this massive outage uh, that affected, really, at a global scale. It affected uh, uh, airports and airlines. Uh, Delta, supposedly, in the United States is still struggling to recover from the mess that it created uh, uh, last Friday and over the weekend. It uh, shut down banks all over the world and, uh, and, and many other kind of institutions and, and functions. And it was, it was really uh, a, a, one of those rare, rare, rare examples where the global network collapsed. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I think makes the global economy what it is, one of the things that makes us successful, rich, prosperous, growing economically is how integrated our systems are, how connected we are, uh, the, the advantages here to human knowledge and to trade and to and, and, and facilitated connection between people is just hard to quantify. It's impossible to quantify. But there are massive benefits, but there are also risks. And, and I think that the, this outage uh, w was an expression of uh, one of those risks. And, and this is uh, this company called Strike, which is, uh, basically sits on, I guess, uh, Microsoft Windows, and is a uh, it's it's called the Falcon cybersecurity software that sits on Microsoft Network. I guess they did an update, and uh, the update had a bug in it, and uh, that bug was not easy to fix. And uh, once that bug was in every system that upgraded to the latest uh, uh, CrowdStrike, which is uh, my guess is automatic. Uh, the upgrade is probably automatic, uh, got affected and, and, and crashed as a consequence. Now, you know, you could ask, why didn't CrowdStrike test this out and so on? So CrowdStrike obviously failed here. But then there's another question. You know, can, can anybody just upload any kind of update to a, a crucial piece of software on uh, Microsoft Windows without Microsoft having anything to do with it? And of course, a lot of the blame for this went out to Microsoft. Why did Microsoft allow a flawed update to go up on its software? And yesterday, a Microsoft spokesman made a comment, which I haven't seen, I mean, this is from, I guess, Euronews, but I really haven't seen it covered anyway. But this is super fascinating and unreported and you know it strikes me as absolutely true <laughs> i don't know i'm not an expert but it just this is exactly what you'd expect this is exactly the kind of thing that you put under the framework of unintended although that's way too benevolent consequences of regulations so microsoft spokesman uh, yesterday suggested that a 2009 agreement between Microsoft and the European Commission as part of the European Commission's antitrust regulations of Microsoft or, or investigation of Microsoft, settlement with Microsoft, was partially responsible, or actually, as he put it, was actually to blame for the widespread IT failure on Friday. Now, how is this? Basically, a spokesman said that the 2009 agreement, quote, gives makers of security software the same level of access to Windows that Microsoft gets. In other words, Microsoft cannot screen the software in advance. It cannot make sure the update is compatible, make sure the update is not going to crash the system. It has no control. The idea was to counteract Microsoft's, quote, monopolistic position in web browsing and bundling. So the idea was to take away control over some pieces of software, like 
security from Microsoft and give people access directly so that Microsoft couldn't bundle these kind of software with, with, you know, and exclude competition. Apple, which does not have such a deal with the EU yet, yet, has a closed ecosystem. You want to put a security piece of software on Apple, I, oh, uh, Apple operating system, Apple is probably going to screen it, test it, not allow it up until it's been approved. Uh, so, uh, and, and this is the reason given for why Apple did not suffer the, the outage uh, on Friday. Um, the European Commission, of course, uh, responded saying, Microsoft is free to decide on its business model. Not true. Regulators, both in the United States and in Europe, have restricted uh, 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 the Microsoft's business model over time. Here's a little effect of, of, of uh, antitrust law that you just wouldn't get, you, you wouldn't discover, un unless you were following these kind of stories, right? It's not obvious. It says Microsoft is free to decide on its business model. It is for Microsoft to adapt its security infrastructure to respond to threats in line with EU competition law. Additionally, consumers are free to benefit from competition and choose between different cybersecurity providers. In other words, um, he's completely evading the issue. You have multiple vendors of cybersecurity on Apple as well, but those vendors have to go through Apple in order to get their software approved to be on Apple's platform. Microsoft, that is not the case. So uh, antitrust regulation have all kinds of negative effects, all kinds of negative impacts on business, on quality, on security, on stability, that we can't predict or sometimes maybe we can't predict, but what can we do about it? Because the regulators are going to do these things whether, you know, they're told this is dangerous or not because they're central planners and they know better than anybody else. Um, so that is uh, that... <laughs> I thought you'd find that interesting. I found it interesting. And I, again, I didn't read that. I read that one story. I didn't see that re really being reported and highlighted. And, and you can imagine, uh, you can imagine why.